What's going on everybody? It's Boris at your College of Design Studio. Today we're doing a quick Adobe Premiere Pro CS6 tutorial. And I'll take you guys through some of the right off the bat functionality Premiere Pro offers. So you can take your uh, video clips, your uh, raw footage you know, from weddings, from uh, events, sports events, whatever, whatever you guys have. Or maybe you're working on a bigger project you're trying to publish it or trying to do something uh, interesting with it and this is some easy uh, functionality available in a, in a preset functions of Adobe Premiere that you can use right now I have my view focused on the top left the top left corner of Adobe Premiere Pro when you open the program you see four windows and I'm focusing on uh, this one right now and I'm, I'm focusing on one specific area we're not going to really do a whole lot with anything else. Um, the metadata, that's just data about your data. Effect controls, that's not really something we're going to mess with today. We're just going to use the presets. Um, I'm going to talk about the audio mixer really quick. Here you can increase the gain of your volume. So if you were to import some footage that you took outside and you can't hear yourself speak, I mean, uh, say there's no wind or a lot of ambient noise, but it's really quiet and muted. You can increase the gain of the entire sequence. Right now, I have it saved as tutorial. You can uh, save it as whatever you like. And I have it set as HDV 1080p, about 30 frames per second, 29.97 frames per second. So, making changes here is going to make global changes for the entire sequence. And you can couple that with increasing the gain for specific clips. And we'll get into that once we get to the bottom right, um, your sequence editor. But this is it's pretty simple. It's pretty self-explanatory. If it's too loud, go ahead and, and decrease it. You see the actual numerical value down here. Or you can use the slider. Uh, I have actually prefer to type the value myself. All you have to do is double click for that. Type in zero. Type in zero. Oops. And that's it. Um, that should be pretty good for now. We don't really want to increase the gain for the purposes of this tutorial. And let's move on down to the bottom left where you see all the clips you have imported into your project, the information about your clips, and the, effect, the preset effects that you can apply to them, as well as uh, markers and, and things of that nature. Okay, we're down here in the bottom left, the bottom left where it says project and uh, you see the project name, uh, I've saved as tutorial. Uh, right off the bat here we see the clips that we've imported and on a quick look it's easy to uh, overlook the functionality that's offered here. If you hover your mouse over some of these clips you see them play or render out, but if you actually click on the clip there's a nifty little uh, scroll bar so instead of waiting for it to render and, and jitter around you can just click and drag on this arrow and take a look at the clip that you have imported that way you have a quick preview of the source footage that you're working with and whether it's what you're interested in working what you're interested in editing or using in your final exported video clip so right here I have two scenes from one of our projects we just finished work on. I think it's called uh, Vigilante Ride Along Officer Dingleberry. We were experimenting with camera angles uh, and things of that nature for a bigger project that we're working on uh, called Distortion. And we're trying to see how we can use cameras within vehicles, outside of vehicles, uh, different, different scenes, different shots. Um, action sequences, nature sequences, and things of that nature. So it was an experimental shot. Uh, but we went ahead and shot that footage. Um, the link is in the description of this video if you want to check that out. Um, and then I also have the introduction to the their College of Design's introduction logo animated with Adobe After Effects. We have a tutorial on that description or description. Um, the link should be in the description of this video. And this scene right here that you're seeing, um, called shootout scene, is basically something just quick and fun that we did. 
without special effects, with After Effects, it looks just like a guy running with water pistols. But we added some muzzle flashes and lighting effects and things of that, that nature. Uh, and I believe, yes, we do have a tutorial on that as well, so if you're interested, check that out in the description below. I've got some music as well that I want to import uh, and overlay um, in a part of a clip. In a part of the clip. So let's take a look at some of the other buttons. We're not going to worry about any of these just yet. Markers, if you want to tag certain footage, certain clips for editing later on or just notes for yourself, you can use that. Uh, we're going to click on the effects tab and take a look at what we have here. We have a lot of pre presets for bevel edges, blurs, uh, mosaics. We're not going to use any of that. You can go ahead and mess with it, see what it does. Uh, what we'll do is we'll use the audio transitions and video transitions to add continuity and uh, a level of professionalism to our clip that we're working with. So it's a little more watchable and more presentable. All right, and let's move over to the top right, which is our sequence preview. All right, guys, we are in the top right, the top right section of Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm going to scroll over a clip right here, and you see a preview. Now, you see all this black space, and then you see the clip. If you were, uh, for example, if you were to set your sequence settings as 1080p, but your footage is something other than um, the settings of your sequence, you'll get an error message saying um, sequence settings do not match clip, would you like to convert? Um, say no. Say no and keep the best um, audio visual settings that you have. I have my settings at 1080p, uh, 30 frames per second. The clip was shot at about 27 frames per second, I believe. Or no, I think it was 29 frames per second, which is fine. But it was shot at 720p, which is why you see all this uh, black space around it. Uh, this is 720 pixels, um, and the surrounding area is the remaining uh, pixels that are missing. And if you see it like this, don't freak out. It's an easy, quick fix. Just double-click on your footage. You can move it around. I would really suggest that because you're throwing it off center. So if you do that, go ahead and press Control Z, um, or maybe you want to have it in a corner somewhere as you're playing multiple clips down below. Um, depends on your preference. Depends on the project you're working on, uh, what you're looking to accomplish. Uh, but if you're looking to just fill this black space with the remainder with uh, your whole clip, just go ahead and uh, click the left mouse button and drag it until it expands and it fills nicely so now you have a preview and you can do a um, couple of things you can press space uh, and it plays it out and <laughs> that's the wrong clip actually guys so I'm gonna when I switch scenes here I'm gonna change it out um, but to give you an idea you can press space you can press play uh, you can mess around with some of these um, other functionality here, uh, step forward, step backwards. The only one we'll really use for today is the play stop toggle. So we can find the area where we want to use the razor tool um, so we can uh, mix and match our clips to provide um, some decent continuity of camera angles and footage that we have. That's really all, all I have for this section of Premiere Pro. Let's move on down to the bottom right, our sequence editor, well, where we'll do the majority of our work, actually almost all of it. Let's do that right now. All right, guys, so I have the clips that I need to work with, and I'm going to do the transitions really quickly. I'm going to apply the presets that I want to use. I'm going to work with my audio really quick, or actually I'm going to work with my video before I do my audio because we need to cut some clips. I'm going to click on video transitions, uh, 3D motions, uh, and I'm, I'm going to click on tumble away. First, I'm going to align my clips until I see that black bar indicating that it's aligned. I'm going to click on tumble away. I'm not going to release my uh, mouse, and I'll drag it over. Uh, ignore any messages about repeated frames. That's perfectly fine. The reason I do that is to avoid a sharp transition between a white background and a darker background of this clip right here. And I'm going to press C or click on my razor tool. 
And right here, when my driver is getting out, I'm going to click. I'm going to align my razor tool with the red arrow. Uh, and I'm going to cut right here. I'm going to move my bigger clip away since I don't need that right now. The reason I do that is so I can match it up with this right here as it's getting out of the car. I'm going to bring that in and align it nicely. Okay. Um, so we have our transition. Right here, we have another sharp transition that we need to fix. Uh, so I'm going to click on right here. I'm going to click on dip to black and I'm going to fade to black to that scene so it looks something like this. It's a little smoother. Not as bad. Right here where my camera is, uh, the cameraman's getting out of the car. Uh, I'm going to cut that away right about here since that's footage we don't need. Uh, I'm going to bring that bigger clip in. And now it matches when uh, the actor here is moving out of the frame. It's moving from the left headlight. And we see him right here with the cameraman. Uh, this scene we need to split in two. Right when he's getting to the door. And what we'll do is we'll apply some music. So right here we're going to cut. And we're going to mute this by right clicking audio gain and negative 96. If you do anything greater than that, it just won't take effect. So if you do negative 100, it's going to set it right back down to um, 96. But that's not a problem. Just click OK or press Enter. And now we'll bring in our music right here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to fix this little spillover um, of audio I get into this clip that's not muted because I don't want music playing there. When that um, red arrow shows up, I'm going to click it and hold down the left, left mouse button and push inwards to the left until I see the black bar telling me I'm aligned. And now my audio clip is aligned um, with this second to last clip. Uh, it's gonna, the music is going to end up uh, pr uh, prematurely, but that's fine because we want to get the sound effect of uh, the door getting kicked in. Uh, we're not actually kicking down the door, we just had some sound effects. And this annoying part where I put my finger over the camera, I'm going to cut that out. So again, I'm going to get right, well I'm not, there you go, right there. Uh, and I'm going to take those two clips that I don't need anymore and I'll delete them. And I'm going to apply a dip to black at the end here. And now let's work on our audio transitions. Um, we're going to do audio transitions, crossfade, constant gain for the beginning of certain clips. So for the beginning of the introduction, um, the beginning of this clip right here, and the beginning of our music. And exponential fade at the end of our music, at the end of our video. Um, and that, that's about it, actually. The reason for that. Uh, constant gain basically increases the, the gain or the audio volume, uh, the audio level of your clip until you get to line level or the level at which it was recorded. So it's a it's an easier transition on the ears than just jumping into loud music or jumping into a loud event. Um, you're 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 phasing in or you're easing in the viewer or the listener uh, to the clip that's coming next, especially if it's a, it's a drastically different transition. For example, from uh, a shooting sequence to music, from music to uh, special effects of a door getting kicked in, or from an introduction to a car interior. So now that we have that, I'm going to render this out, um, and I'll do that by File, Export, Media, and then once you click on that, I have selected H.264. Uh, you can select anything you want. Um, if you scroll down far enough, you can select YouTube 29.97 1080p. I prefer that as uh, the best quality. Go ahead and click that. Uh, there's also an option where you can click maximum render. Uh, you can do that. It takes a little bit longer and your file size might be bigger, but um, the rendering is better. Uh, make sure you have both options selected for audio and video unless you don't want to explore, uh, export your audio. And 
I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this clip so you can see the transitions that we apply. But those are some uh, quick and easy pre uh, prefix effects that you can apply right off the bat um, available in Premiere Pro that can make your raw footage a little more watchable and a little more professional. Especially if you're using multiple camera angles um, and multiple clips. Alright, follow me. Alright, I'm right behind you. Alright everybody, this brings us to the end of today's tutorial. If you guys have any questions or comments, or if you know of a better way to do some of this stuff using Premiere Pro, definitely let us know in the comment section below. Um, and we'll include your comment in the next tutorial session we do for Premiere Pro. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on our Ecology Designs production.